enacted. Every time I hear that anthem, I get goosebumps. Me alone? No, no. It is one of the most beautiful pieces of music. Providing support for the most vulnerable in our society. The key goal of the program of advancement through health and education path. And today, ladies and gentlemen, our mission is to hear from you the beneficiaries, members of the community. We want to hear your ideas on how PATH can be improved to better serve those who need it the most. Good morning and welcome to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security's PATH Town Hall Meeting organized for the good people of St. Anne. My name is Stacey Ann Smith and it is my pleasure to be your moderator for this very important conversation. The first in a series of town hall meetings that will be held across the country. Let me begin by acknowledging the presence of the Minister of Labor and Social Security, the Honorable Pernell Charles, Jr. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Mrs. Colette roberts Risden. Chief Technical Director in the Ministry, Mrs. Audrey Dare-Williams. Project Director Elsa Marks Willis, Director of Social Security Ms. Suzette Morris, and Pastor Beverly Black of the Apostolic Ark Pentecostal Church. Special welcome to representatives of other agencies of government, the Social Development Commission, Citizens Associations in and around the parish of St. Anne. Wave at me if you're from a Citizens Association. Any Citizens Associations represented in the house? Schools, parents and teachers, faith-based organizations, the media, and of course, PATH beneficiaries. Wave at me if you're a beneficiary of PATH. All right. I must also call out the Council of Voluntary Social Services and Inspector of the Poor for their on-site assistance to individuals who are applying to become PATH beneficiaries or those who have questions about the program. Indeed, that is what today is all about. Thank you for your commitment and for giving support today. Indeed, a big thank you to everyone for taking the time to be here to participate in this town hall. Happy to also welcome our online audience. Thanks to those who are tuned in to the social media platforms of the ministry, the Jamaica Information Service, and the IG page of Minister Charles. I hear Minister Charles is live on his page. Excellent stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, today's town hall is being held under the theme, On a Path to Transformation. In fact, this meeting is not a talk shop and I was given specific instructions. The ministry is here to gather information, to collect your feedback, take note of all of your suggestions on how to improve the PATH program so it can better serve your needs, the needs of those most vulnerable in our society. I know that Minister Charles and the team have some ideas but he has been very clear about the need to engage with the people, to hear your concerns, and also to provide information. We're going to hear from him and the PS, but first, let's invite Pastor Beverly Black of the Apostolic Ark Pentecostal Church to offer prayers. Please make her welcome. Good morning, everybody. You are accustomed to my saying, praise the Lord. Let us just stand and bow our heads right where we are.
heavenly Father, you who sit high on the circumference of this earth, you who have Jamaica in the palm of your hands, bless our land, guard our land and its citizens as we come before you this morning. And so we continue to honor you because we are dependent on you. We ask for special guidance and protection from one end of this island to another. But in particular, we ask you to guard St. Anne. Dear God, as we go on this path to transformation, we ask you, Lord, that you grant us wisdom. You grant us strength. You grant us the right words for the day so that, God, your name will be honored. We ask it for protection for every individual in this place, but in particular, we ask you for protection for those on this platform. Lord, we single out Honorable Pernell Charles Jr. We place him before you. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to remember the other ministers, permanent secretaries, and all those in such position which desire same of you. Take over today. Let every question that will be asked be guided by your heavenly wisdom. Let every word that should be said be said in your honor and in your glory. For those who are employees of this ministry, we ask for special physical, spiritual strength for them. Lord, let not one individual in this place today leave without having heard something more about you. Thank you for the different departments. And Lord, those who come because of a particular need, we pray you answer their prayer. We leave everyone online and in this building in your charge and in your care. Continue to mold, continue to fashion, continue to guide, because we say, Lord, take over in a special way as we leave everyone. Let none be left out, but let everyone be guided by you. Have your own sweet way in this place today. Remember the mother Rita, God, she needs you. And so we ask that you answer her cries and her pleas as well. Take over now. Thank you for this meeting today. And most of all, let your name be glorified because we leave the entire meeting from the beginning to the end. And as we leave this meeting in your hands, those who have traveled from one end of this island to be here today, take over as we say thanks in your powerful, holy, righteous, healing name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much. What a powerful prayer. So calming and all-encompassing. Thank you for that, Pastor Black. I felt it. As I shared earlier, today's meeting is one step on the path to transformation. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security will be making some changes to improve the program of advancement through health and education, which we all call PATH, right? And you probably already know it's a social welfare program that was introduced back in 2002 by the ministry. Let's look at the screen and watch this very short video for a little bit more on what PATH is all about.
through PATH, the program of advancement through health and education, we provide critical social assistance to needy households, especially those with children, pregnant and breastfeeding women, persons with disabilities. The government of Jamaica, your government, is committed to guaranteeing social protection for our most vulnerable citizens. Through PATH, the program of advancement through health and education, we provide critical social assistance to needy households, especially those with children, pregnant and breastfeeding women, persons with disabilities, and elderly dependents. Beneficiaries of the PATH program receive bi-monthly cash grants, back-to-school and tuition grants, and examination fee assistance. Participants are included in the Steps to Work program, the Ministry of Education's School Feeding Program, among others. We invite you to apply for the assistance your family needs. Visit your parish office and apply today. Remember to bring your children's birth certificate, TRN, and a government-issued ID. Your Ministry of Labor and Social Security partners with the Ministry of Education and Youth and Health and Wellness to provide several programs for our PATH beneficiaries. We want to help. We care. Apply today. For more information on PATH, visit our website at www.mlss.gov.jm or call us at 876-922-8007 or visit any of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security Parish offices island-wide. PATH. Serving you since 2002. Yes, indeed. PATH has been helping Jamaican families for more than 20 years. And it is the ministry's intention to improve the program to serve you a little better. One of the key persons in the process is a decorated professional who actually played a very important role in designing and implementing PATH from day one. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Mrs. Colette roberts Risden, is one of the architects of the PATH program, and she comes to us now to bring greetings. Please make her welcome. Thank you. Let me start by acknowledging the Honorable Colonel Charles Jr., Minister of Labor and Social Security, Mrs. Audrey Dare Williams, Chief Technical Director in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, Project Director Elsa Marks Willis, who is on the stage. And let me thank um, Reverend Black or Pastor Black. As a matter of fact, when I saw that there would be a Beverly Black, I wondered if it was one of my own staff because we have a member of staff that works in the St. Anne Parish office named Beverly Black, and I said, I didn't know Miss Black was a pastor, but this morning I realized it's, it's not the same person. So thank you very much, um, Pastor Black. Um, our moderator, our beneficiaries who are here, most importantly, if it wasn't for you, there would be no program. Um, good morning. I want to acknowledge all the persons who are here from the schools, if there are anybody here from the health centers who we partner very closely with, the local government and members of the media, other specially invited guests, my staff from St. Anne, and I gather we also have staff coming from Portland to be here this morning. Good morning. It's a good morning today, right? I agree. God woke us up this morning and we saw the beautiful sunshine and beautiful Jamaica and it is indeed a beautiful day. For more than two decades, the government of Jamaica has been on a mission to break the cycle of poverty that persists from generation to generation. In so doing, the government is seeking to ensure that every member of Jamaican families that are deemed vulnerable are provided with some form of assistance. Back in 2000,
we undertook a massive reform of Jamaica's social safety net. And some of the objectives of this reform, I'll tell you what some of them are, and I'll tell you where we have come, because you see, I've been in this ministry so long, so I know the history. One of the key changes was to ensure that there was objectivity and transparency in the selection process, that is, who qualifies. There was a time when we didn't have an objective mechanism and it was who I know and who this, the person down the street know and they get on the program, right? It was also to ensure that our beneficiaries were treated with dignity. Some of you, any of you recall the food stamp program? Who remembers the food stamp program? All right. Now, back in the day when we had the food stamp program, we used to pay food stamp almost anywhere. On the shop pays, in the schoolyard, and we felt that that was, not, that was not treating people with dignity, right? So one of the objectives was also to improve how we treat our people. Another objective was to reduce fragmentation. So we had food stamp program and we had other little, little programs. We also had students who, at the time tuition fee in high school was still around. And you remember you used to have to apply for the tuition fee exemption from the school. And it wasn't necessarily that it's the most needed that got tuition fee paid by the government. It could be the, the people who knew the most or the greedy. So one of the objectives was also to ensure that those people who we identify as being in need should be benefiting from other government programs automatically. Another objective was also to improve the benefit levels and to allow people to decide how they spent their monies. Those of you who remember food stamp, food stamp was only to be used to purchase specific food items, remember? And you used to go to the shop and only those food items. But no, the government said, we don't want to restrict you. We want to give persons the freedom to choose how you spend your money. All right? It could be food. It could be something else. It could be helping to pay the school um, books or uniform or whatever else. And so back in the day, we had the food stamp program and we had another program named the old age and incapacity program and those programs were merged into PATH. Any of you remember what was the name of PATH before PATH became PATH? No. Elsa, you are excluded. <laughs> so PATH was called the Jamaica Unified Benefits Program. And for about a year, that was the name until we launched the program officially and renamed it Path. And what a wonderful name it is because the objective of PATH is to take people on a path from dependence to independence. All right? So PATH was piloted back in 2001 and was launched island-wide in 2002. In the nearly 22 years of its existence, PATH has added a number of components to the benefits. Through the Ministry of Education, PATH beneficiaries get school feeding automatically. When we had tuition fee, PATH students um, got exempted from tuition fee. And now with CSEC subjects, the Ministry of Education covers the cost of the CSEC examination fees. We have also added post-secondary grants tertiary bursaries for our students that have gone on to university. And we also have the Steps to Work program, which is a program that is seeking to work with adult members in PATH households to transition them into the labor force, whether it be doing 
a course at heart so that you can um, become more marketable or providing you with entrepreneurial training and micro grants so you can start your own small business. I can say without fear of contradiction that PATH has positively impacted thousands of lives. You agree with me? Today, PATH continues to provide support to 130,000 families and the majority of beneficiaries are children. PATH has no doubt been a critical lifeline for many Jamaican families. However, over the years, there have been concerns with elements of the program. So even though I tell you all the nice things and all that we have done, we know, we have heard it. There are concerns. The recent pandemic and ever-evolving needs of our population are redefining social protection and how we assist our people. If our interventions are to remain relevant, we must adapt to the need to change in response. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that you will agree with me that despite the successes, time has come. You agree? Time come, right? Time, the time has come for us to take a review of PATH to ensure that it continues to address and meet the needs of the most vulnerable. Today's town hall meeting is intended to do just that. We want every Jamaican, everyone here, and we have some persons joining us online, we want everyone to have an input. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like, what you don't like. What are some of the things you want to see your government, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security, do to assist people in Jamaica? We appreciate and thank all of you who have taken the time to come out. And I encourage all of you to participate in the discussion. Let your voice be heard. Don't be a spectator. Don't be shy. Let us hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, P.S. And I tell you, that transition from dependence to being independent is so important. I was just sharing with the minister as um, the permanent secretary was presenting that my family was one of those that used to get food stamps back in the day. You know? So it is possible for a country to provide support for those who are vulnerable. And you move from needing help to not needing help and even thriving. So big up to the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. You have continuously improved over the years and we know that this next phase is going to bring additional benefits for our people. Um, our next speaker can attest to those benefits, um, a beneficiary of PATH. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a resident of retreat in Brownstown, Miss Colleen Brown. Please make her welcome. A pleasant morning, everyone. Thank you to our honorable minister, Mr. Colonel Charles Jr. Thank you for hosting this meeting here this morning, sir. And my name is Colleen Brown. I'm a 43-year-old single parent. I have two children. One has Down syndrome, and I find it very difficult I'm trying to get on the program a few months. Well, it's over here. I was trying, and I eventually get onto the program after some time. Yes, I tried um, getting onto the program for some time. You know, sir, we're asking you to look at the, the amount of time it takes 
for the whole process to be expedited. I don't, I'm not sure if it's, um, we don't have adequate people in the system or if it needs, persons need training, training in regards to going forward. But we're asking you, sir, to look at that because taking a year and we are in, um, we're having problems in regards to um, monies in regards to taking care of the children, you know, I'm asking for the process to speed up a bit because it's taking too long. I'm a single parent, I'm divorced, and I get no assistance from my kids, my children, father. And Path helped me in regards to transportation for my kids, purchasing snacks, and also lunch subsidy at the school. So I thank you so much, sir, and I'm asking you to look into this because the process needs to be worked on. It's taking too long. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that, Ms. Brown. You, you hear the, um, the passion in, in her voice. I mean, path has come through for her. There is support, but Minister, you have your work cut out for you. Um, Ms. Brown and several others want it to be improved. Um, really great to hear that path is making a difference in the lives of, of, of the people of St. Anne, certainly the lives of Jamaicans across the country. And as you heard from P.S. Ro Roberts Risden, um, we know that work has been going on, but we do know that things have to improve. Last year, Prime Minister Andrew Holness gave a commitment to reform the PATH program and Minister Charles is the man that is leading that process. Please welcome him now, the Honorable Colonel Charles Jr., as he comes to tell us more about the plans to overhaul the program. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everyone here. It's a beautiful morning, a very important morning. This is the first of a series of big town halls that we intend to have across the country. But we've chosen St. Anne. And for those who don't know, St. Anne is very special to me. I didn't reveal this when we were discussing St. Anne being the first parish. But I just need to say by a show of hands, who is my relative? And you'll understand that my roots are deep in this parish. Yes, yes, yes. I won't give you the story of me coming to St. Anne and seeing a beautiful girl on the road, stopping and she's saying, hello, cousin. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be here. Um, I want to, of course, acknowledge, firstly, the wonderful job being done by our excellent moderator. Um, I didn't know that she herself is a testimony uh, to uh, the work that the government is putting in in terms of giving support to families. But if you talk about an example of an individual coming from circumstances needing food stamps uh, to being one of the most prominent speakers and motivators in our island, give her a round of applause. Let me acknowledge my permanent secretary, that lady who you saw on the TV, right? You saw her, and she just spoke to you a while ago. My permanent secretary, Mrs. Collett Roberts Risden, my chief technical director who is right there working hard in the yellow, uh, Mrs. Audrey Dear Williams. Give her a round of applause. And we have a full team here this morning for you so that you can ask questions that we can answer. And one of the members of the team is our director, uh, Miss Suzette Morris, who is coming. And we have also our good um, leader when it comes on the path, who has a, a very long name, Elsa Elizabeth Marks Willis. 
And, and you, be, you best believe that in every meeting, she says the full name. My name is Elsa Elizabeth Marks Lewis. Willis. So you have to know it fully. Reverend Black, whenever we need a prayer, we're going to have to call on you. What an amazing prayer to start us off this morning. All was left was for her to just send out the offering bag and then do an altar call. But it was a full sermon in one. Members of the Saint Anne family, whether you are in the political directorate or otherwise, community organizations, all of the colleagues supporting us, my amazing parish office staff that are here and have been here working hard. Um, I won't call out all the names, but you know yourself from our parish manager and everyone else. Path beneficiaries who are here. Uh, it's your day. We are here for you. And so we have brought all of the members of our ministry team here. We've brought members of the media who we also want to acknowledge as being very critical uh, to spreading the message and all of the specially invited guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you. Uh, your government, your prime minister, your minister, we are all committed to ensuring that this conversation with you doesn't end as just a conversation. The goal is for us to listen to the whole story, which is why I am so proud of the testimony given. Um, it's Colleen by Colleen. Um, and I'm particularly proud of the fact that we live in a country where Colleen can get up on a platform, express thanks, but also express without fear the criticisms. We have to be grateful that we're in that kind of democracy where you can get up and say, listen, thanks, minister, but things need to be better, boss. That is, that is Jamaica. That is what we want. We, and you know, P.S. just whispered to me, what a good job she did. Because we're not here to pretty it up. We want to hear what the problems are. Because our goal is to identify the problems, develop the strategy with you, and to implement the solutions. And when we finish, we're going to have a stronger program. A program that will have the right people on path, on the right path, going to the right place. And so, thank you so much for the testimony. I know that there are many others, and I hope that we get an opportunity to discuss further. This program is your government's flagship program in terms of offering support to vulnerable individuals and vulnerable families. And so, you will recall our Prime Minister when he asked me and instructed that I serve as the Minister of Labor and Social Security, even in his introduction, he said, Pernell is going to the ministry to transform. And I said, oh Lord, what that mean now, boss? What is it you want us to do? And can I tell you one of the number one things he mentioned? The overhaul of path. He said, too many Jamaicans are saying that we have to look on the selection criteria. We need to address the lengthy delay in terms of verification. We need to see whether or not the program is not only helping, but is it truly achieving the goals that we seek? And so we have adopted a transformational approach which reinforces our commitment to ensuring that PATH remains and also improves in being responsive, effective, and progressive in addressing the most current needs uh, that we have for the vulnerable in our country. For some 20 plus years, our permanent secretary, who was there when it started, right? And if you look on her, that means 20 minus, she would have been about eight, because she's around 30 years old now, right? Yes, yeah, just, just say yes, just nod, yes. So 20 years ago, your child labor, oh boy. 20 years ago, uh, when we started PATH as a country, uh, the, the goal was to make sure that we provided income support to Jamaica's most vulnerable families, administering welfare assistance to address the consumption needs. Um, in a thrust to break the intergenerational cycle of poverty, we don't want generation after generation dealing with the same problems. We want 
you who are on path now, 20 years from now, to see your children standing here. Oh, watch that. See the testimony here? Okay? We want your children to be standing here as moderators, as ministers, as permanent secretaries, speaking about what path did for them. So, yes, you can clap. So we acknowledge that while, and CTD, dear Williams, always says this, while the program has made commendable strides in reducing poverty rates and improving access to education and health care, there is room for improvement. I have a grandmother who comes from St. Anne. She passed that 100 years old in 2010 on my birthday. Yes, she, she was always a lady of humor. She used to tell me, the minute, the second you think that you're too good to learn or improve, you got a problem. And so, yes, path is good. Path is helping. But the minute, the second we think that path is so good that we can't engage to improve, we got a problem. So we don't want to reach to that stage. We want to adopt an approach in this country of continuous assessment and continuous improvement. We want to evolve. And so as of August 2023, we looked on the numbers and we saw that we have nearly 300,000 beneficiaries, 285,000 to be exact. About 128,000 families benefiting, all registered on path. Of this number, 65% are children, 27% elderly, and other categories, persons with disabilities, pregnant and lactating women, indigent adults, and others. But they are all asking for us to ensure that things improve. So we have looked on what path is now. And we see that on the path now, as the PS said, you receive bi-monthly cash grants, which are conditioned on school attendance and on health care visits. So we are pushing for a holistic development, meaning we want to make sure that the cash grant is not just taken, but that the children are going to school, the mothers are going to the health clinic. And we also see where there's a need for us to look on the technology that is utilized. 65% of our beneficiary families receive payment by check. And they, we need to move now into other phases where we can start utilizing more efficient transactions. So I'm just highlighting these things, Pastor, to show that it's good, but there's room for improvement. Eh? Everybody looking around to say, who be calling Pastor? It's all right, I you may call Pastor. It's the vision. <laughs> and if you know me, Mr. Sangster, that gentleman in the white shirt at the back there, and his hair is as white as his shirt, He'll tell you that I consider myself a scientist. Before politics, before law, I'm a scientist. And so I need evidence to determine what and why I'm doing something. Can I just pick up and say, well, I'm going to change this. No. What is going on? So I looked on the 2021 study that was done about PATH and other programs. And what we found in that Tracer study is that former beneficiaries of PATH are proven to have better economic well-being in their household after they come off of path. I mean, it, it works. We found that over time, the education level of household members improved as the majority of children were sent to school in compliance with the conditions for continued receipt of their cash transfers. We found that migratory individuals have a higher educational attainment than the head of their original household. Meaning, if you live in a family and you're on path and you're young, it is likely that you're going to do better than your parents because of the support you're getting. What it means is that the evidence shows us, not just what we feel or what we think, the evidence is saying to us that path is working. But 
in addition to that, the evidence is also saying it can be better. I thought I'd get a clap for that. So let's tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to discuss the transformation, I'm going to discuss the challenges, and I'm going to tell you what the new developments are. The overhaul of PATH will be conducted in three phases. Firstly, we're going to do what we're doing now. A series of key stakeholder engagements uh, will be conducted. Town hall, smaller meetings, um, you know, question and answer on social media, all different methods will be utilized. And we're going to have, after that, the formulation of two technical working groups. The first group is going to review and provide recommendations regarding the technical design of PATH, which includes the selection criteria and the benefit levels. And I'm going to tell you this. If I had, church, $10 for every time somebody asks me or Miss Elsa, what is it that can get you on part? And whether it's a fridge and a stove keeping them off part, I would be a trillionaire. It is a question that we have to ask today and answer for you. But it is a question that the, te the first technical working group is going to dive into it and make sure... Oh, I have a... Oh, wow. I have a whole presentation which I haven't been using. But I tried to press it and it's not coming up. That's why. Let's try again. Oh, okay. Where are we? All right. I can point there? Yes. Point there. All right. Let's go back. Good. I feel like a real professor from university now. What do you say? <laughs> I have a pointer. I have a jacket. I'm good. All right. So, as I said, we're going to have the engagements. Um, do you mind if I take off my jacket? It's hot. Yeah, okay. All right. So I cannot. Let's just break it down. Let's have some. All right. Good, good. So the two technical working groups. The first group. Am I in the right place, P.S.? The first group is going to deal with the issues in terms of the selection criteria and the benefit levels. The second group is going to look on and scrutinize and provide strategic guidance on the reassessment of the rules of the program, including the conditionalities, which means the child having to go to school, um, the mother having to go to the, the, the clinic, those things that you have to do now um, for you to continue to be eligible. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, for instance, let's say you have a child who is on path, but things are so bad that the child still, even though they're going on part, is not making it to school. Right now, that child will not get the grant. Am I correct? Because you have to go to school. And there's a sensibility that you have to go to school. But we have to look deeper because there are a few persons who still are not getting the grant, not going to school, and not getting any help. We want to cover everybody. So we're going to dive into that to see whether there are changes needed, whether it just means that we need more clarification or monitoring, or whether things need to be different. The final phase of uh, the revamping will be conducted through the formation of a steering committee uh, to serve as an advisory committee and then to help to make strategic decisions on the reform process. This committee will be informed by the work of those two technical working groups that I spoke about um, and chaired by uh, the Minister of Labor and Social Security. You know that gentleman there. And it's going to provide reports to cabinet to determine now what is the progress of the reform. And so far in the first phase of the review, we have held a series of stakeholder engagements last year. Uh, for those who may not know, this is not the start of our engagements. Last year I came, well, we came to St. Anne Parish Office. Where's our parish manager? Not inside. Um, we came to St. Anne Parish Office, we went across the country visiting with our staff members firstly because I'm telling you this, we talk a lot about beneficiaries, but can I tell you beneficiaries that I think that the staff of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security 
they want to change just as much. Every single staff member that we spoke to could give me an individual story that pained them. It, it's almost like it's their family. And they found different ways of saying to me, Minister, we have to find a way to adjust, to improve, to be better. And I really like that. I, I, I respect that. Because the persons who we have at the ministry, they're not just doing a job. This is, this is, this is more than that for them. It's a commitment that they have made. Anybody here from us, our, our parish office? Put up your hand for me. Just give them a round of applause, someone, please. And thank you. Thank you for what you do. Uh, we're going to move now to the challenges. Um, and, of course, you know, in my engagement with staff members, with clients, with path beneficiaries, uh, even on social media persons speaking to us, we recognize that there are several issues. Um, and one of the primary issues is with the selection process. Am I correct? Yes? All right. So your government recognizes this issue and we're taking steps to modernize the program's data collection and verification process. We are going to listen carefully to what you say and not just listen and then go through one ear and come out the next one. The goal is to listen, it go through the ears, go into the brain, make some decisions and then we make it better. So using technology and data analytics, uh, our, our goal is to create a new fit-for-purpose path that reaches those who need this support the most. Isn't that correct? Another challenge that we face um, is the need to implement improved monitoring and evaluation. What does that mean? It means, Colleen, that when you're on path, you still need that support. You still need that monitoring. Um, but the reality is that uh, we may have one social worker treating with hundreds of persons. Um, and even though, you know, I believe some people think the social workers don't have to sleep, right? They do have to sleep. Um, and they do have blood running through them just like all of us. So there's need for us to look on it to see whether we need to improve the structure, the training, additional persons, whatever it is. Uh, to work out a better system for monitoring and evaluation. While PATH also um, has undoubtedly improved lives, there's also the need for us to improve in terms of the collection of data. Meaning, if we can get the information on how PATH has helped you and the challenges that you have had, does it give us an opportunity to do better for the next set of persons coming the next year? Yes, it does. So we're going to improve that because an essential part of the overhaul will be investing in robust monitoring systems and research initiatives to track the long-term outcomes of the beneficiaries. We don't want something that is just popping the microwave, come out, and we're in a business about you. That's not the goal. The goal is not to give out bi-monthly cash grants and then go about your business. I don't want that. You don't want that. What we want is to make sure that this is creating a better, stronger Jamaica. Let's move on to the new developments. Perhaps one of the most exciting developments in this transformation of PATH is our commitment to ensuring that PATH is sustainable and effective with every participant improving along the spectrum from where they are towards economic independence and social mobility. Everybody should be able to stand up and give that testimony of when they were younger, the benefit they received, and where they are today. And so, uh, this strategic approach um, aims to e equip our beneficiaries with the tools that they need to truly improve, to become self-reliant as we facilitate your path to excellence. To support this approach, then, we are exploring partnerships. Partnerships with private sector and various civil society organizations to enhance the impact of this strategy. And these collaborations are going to allow for us to ensure that PATH students and PATH beneficiaries can access more job opportunities, more training opportunities, because what's the best way for you to come off of PATH and become self-reliant? To get a? To get a? A job. But you can't get a job if you don't have no? Education, boy, I don't, you don't need me. Let me pack up. 
too many people here bright uh, in addition to education when you go ctd williams and you have the education they're still asking you for something else experience but guess who allows you to get on the job training path so that when you come out of your university you can say i have received on the job training through the steps to work program I worked in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security with Miss Elsa Elizabeth Marx Willis. And she taught me about data entry. And she taught me about filing. And she taught me about how to interact with people and have a good attitude towards my work. And when I come... You say amen? amen. I need to start a church. <laughs> so you have the experience coming through PATH. You have the education support through PATH. And that's going to help you to be self-reliant. Additionally, uh, we want to ensure, as your government, that the impact of this program is comprehensive. We want families to break free, I said, of that cycle of poverty. And so the transformation um, is our commitment to truly making sure that the right people are served and elevating the standard of living for our most vulnerable families. I'm going to close right now. When I say I'm going to close, I expect people to start crying, saying, no, go on, minister, please. Let, 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 me, let me do it over again. I'm going to close. No, don't close. Yeah, I, I have to. We're on the radio. They're watching the time. I'm sorry. Okay. In conclusion, PATH has been a lifeline for many. And I'm telling you something, you know, uh, you know my father. Yeah, yes. And if it's one thing that he did for his children, is he exposed us to the reality of life. At a very early age. We didn't just see what was good and nice and nicey nicey. And I was exposed early out to the blessings that I had. So that I would understand the responsibility I have. And there are too many families, too many children that are not being parented because the parent need parenting. There, there are too many persons still, still who have challenges that if you sit down and truly understand what they're going through, your eye them going open for two days straight. Some of them afraid to talk. Some of them shame to talk. It is you that we are here to help. It is you that we are here to transform this program for. It is you that we are here to serve. And we're going to break that cycle. And I want to tell you what's very important in that. Your opinion matters. Your recommendations matter to us. And as Colleen came up here and spoke honestly, we want you to tell us the honest truth about how you feel. Because if you tell us that, then we will be able to address the concerns. If you hide it and it go on like everything pretty and nice, we won't know exactly how to tweak this program for it to be better. So by addressing those concerns regarding selection and the beneficiary system and the conditionalities and the requirements and all of those things, we intend for this to be more effective. This renewed focus on eradicating poverty and empowering individuals in our country is a testament to your government's unwavering dedication to truly building a brighter future for all of our citizens. You've heard our Prime Minister say it many times. Our goal is to move from poverty to prosperity. What that looks like starts right here. One love. Thank you so much, Minister Charles. And ladies and gentlemen, you heard him say it. Do not be shy. The PS said it earlier. The feedback that you will share today is critical in this phase of transformation. Don't hide how you feel. As Minister said, we're not here to pretty it up. We want to know what the issues are because we can't fix 
right? What you don't share, what we don't know. All right, so our participants here and online, you do have the opportunity to share your ideas and give that very important feedback. For those of you in the room, we have a question and answer segment coming up in just a short while. You will be given an opportunity to ask your questions and to give your thoughts and ideas. Um, if you're a PATH beneficiary, tell us what works. Tell us what doesn't work. If you're hoping to get into the program, tell us what your issues are, what, what has prevented you from getting into the program before, and what you would like to see. We're going to be opening the floor for that shortly, but first I'm going to get into a short discussion with the Minister, the Permanent Secretary, and Elsa Elizabeth Marks Willis. I just love that. Um, we have been streaming live on the Ministry's YouTube channel, the YouTube and Facebook page of the Jamaica Information Service. Uh, we don't want to leave you out of the conversation, so share your questions. And um, Tess, let me know if you're monitoring to see if you get any of those questions. And we will try our best to incorporate those questions into the conversation. Uh, let me also acknowledge, I got a note earlier, we do have a couple of remittance agencies represented here, the agencies where PATH beneficiaries collect their payments. Um, NCB, the National Commercial Bank, we have Cornella Allardyce, who is representing NCB this morning, and we have Athena Campbell from Paymaster. So big up yourself, thank you so much for the partnership of your organization with the Ministry for PATH. Are you hearing me loud and clear? Yes, All right, excellent stuff. So, as I said, we want to get into a little discussion, Minister P.S., Ms. Elsa, just to get some more details and information. The truth is the ministry has been collecting data. Uh, members of the public, beneficiaries have shared, so we do have some ideas of what some of the concerns are. But I want to start with you, Minister, on the big picture why PATH is so important at a time when Jamaica is experiencing unprecedented levels of investor interest, which, according to the Prime Minister speaking earlier this week, is due to Jamaica's positive economic environment. We are on target, ladies and gentlemen, to reduce our GDP ratio to 74%. We've had record low unemployment of 4.5%, 148,000 jobs were created over the past seven years as shared by Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. How essential is the PATH program to the continued growth and development of our economy? Help us to make that connection to the big picture, Minister. I just like hearing you speak. I mean, you, you like hearing her speak? I don't want to hear her ask me enough questions. Don't it? But besides that, thank you for the question. Um, I read the news yesterday and was delighted to see that the, the last indicator had us falling even further in unemployment from 4.5 to 4.2, the lowest unemployment. That deserves a round of applause, <laughs> definitely. And our Prime Minister, uh, when speaking to us, is always at pains in saying, listen, unemployment is at its lowest. The, the world is, is looking on Jamaica as an example of a country that has gone through the pandemic and is better on the other side because of good decisions, good management. However, we still have our people who may not be feeling that directly as yet. And so while we're doing all of the restructuring and strengthening of the economic framework, Pernell, we have to focus on our people. You have to focus on lifting them up, not just handing out to them. 
And so the restructuring of this program is essential if our development and our growth is to be sustainable. Because we can't have truly sustainable growth by just having infrastructural development. Human capital development is central. And the Prime Minister gets it, we get it, um, and that's why we are on this mission to make sure that we leave no one behind. You know, this PATH program is massive. Almost 10% of the country, when you look on it, is impacted by the PATH program. And the reality is, if we are to truly have a comprehensive um, investment made, we have to make sure that PATH, as the flagship of the delivery of these services, is as effective as it can be. And that's why we are here today. Thank you so much for that. It's about making that development felt among the people and making sure it's sustainable. Minister, you spoke earlier about overhauling the PATH program. Remind us of exactly what will be done. Is there a timeline, perhaps? Well, it starts already. Um, and we started last year with the overhaul. Um, and one of the things I was adamant on is that, listen, I need to talk to my staff. I need to talk to the social workers. I need to talk to the, the officers, the ancillary staff, all of the members of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security who have been doing this for years. Um, and so we went out to the parish offices and, and we spoke to staff and we spoke to persons who were there and we asked parish managers to collect information from staff members and, and get from them what their recommendations are. And that was the first phase for me in terms of understanding more about the program. Additionally, uh, we have last year started to have engagements with beneficiaries. Uh, but we moved to this stage of the, of the, uh, the large overhaul because we want to understand more about how PATH is impacting people and where there are gaps. So we're focusing on the big ticket items. How can you get on the PATH? Why is my sister on PATH and I'm not PATH and we live on the same street? Yeah. Um, what are the criteria? Um, what are the benefits that we're getting? Um, and when it comes on to the time it takes for you to get on the path, what are the issues impacting whether I get on path in three months, one year, or a longer time? These are all questions that everywhere we went, we heard these questions. Um, and now uh, we are setting up the system to evaluate, to answer, and then to implement solutions that are going to help us to improve on the concerns that we've heard. Yes, tell us more about the groups that are eligible for PATH and how perhaps that might change. Thank you. Well, let me say first and foremost, PATH targets families. And so even though Minister said that 285,000 persons are direct beneficiaries of PATH, there are actually more than that because many of you know that you will get uh, benefits for the children, but there may be an adult in the household that we don't calculate, we don't count that adult in the household when we say 285,000. We're counting the persons who are direct beneficiaries of the program. So who benefits from the program? Well, first of all, you have to be deemed a family that is in need. And who within that family gets that benefit? It's the children who are in primary, well, from babies right up to the end of secondary school, those, um, those children, pregnant and lactating women, and of course we know pregnancy doesn't last forever. Um, um, and so we, we cover those women as well up to six months after the baby has been born. Elderly persons who are in that household and elderly for us is persons over 65 years. And we also have persons with disabilities. So if you have someone in the family like Miss Smith, was it Smith? Brown, sorry Miss Brown. 
um, like Miss Brown, who has a child who has a disability, um, when that child gets to 18, that child will still continue. She will still continue to get a benefit for that child because of the disability. So those are the main categories that are on path. Thank you so much for that clarification. I want to ask um, Ms. Elsa, we may have people in the room and online who say they are in need, but what are some of the factors that might prevent them from qualifying a path? Okay, I would prefer to, to spin it the other way, to see what are the factors that qualify you. Uh, because we, we, we speak positive. We don't, you know, want people to think that we are excluding anybody. As Minister said, we're leaving no one behind. And um, there's a lot of myths about who can get on and what gets you on. And some of the, the things that we hear is that a fridge and a stove. This, this, today we want to nullify that argument to say no. Think about it. Would an internationally recognized program like PATH, uh, funded some in previous years by the World Bank, use a selection mechanism um, like a fridge and a stove to deny people? You wouldn't get anybody to support you to fund it. So that's the first thing. How do you qualify for PATH? No, in countries like developed countries like the United States, they can simply look at the amount of money that you earn to see if you qualify or not. We don't have that luxury in Jamaica because of the informality and people, it's a bit difficult to declare income. So we use what we call a proxy, which is looking at the household's ability to consume what they can purchase, who is living in the household, the size of the, the, the household, where is the household related? located because there are indicators of poverty generally that we can use to make the determinations of need. And we are supported in this process through the Planning Institute of Jamaica and the Jamaica Survey of Living Conditions. So we have a comprehensive poverty tool that we use to assess people. So we look at their family size, the head of the household, employment and children and the presence of vulnerability in your household. And that's the determination that we use for selection. So it's not straightforward in that, let's say I have a microwave, because that was one of the, the complaints. The consumer that, durable thing that you right. like, it's a fridge and a stove and microwave, no. And, and not because, as Minister said, me and my sister live on the same street, I am on path, but she can't get on. Just your proximity doesn't automatically say whether you'll be on path or not. You do a holistic assessment. Yes, and that's correct. Okay. But you are looking at how to adjust that assessment, though, to make it And see better. what other factors can um, be used as a determinant. Because, for example, you could have someone in your household, the main breadwinner, that has a non-communicable disease, and that person is unable to work and to support the family. The proxy means does not look at things like that. So other qualitative aspects could be incorporated to make that determination. And the PS wants to add something to that, Elsa. Yes. Um, what I wanted to add is that two things, actually. We do have an appeals process currently for persons who don't qualify that you can appeal and say, hey, you said that I don't qualify. I believe I am deserving of this benefit. But today, I think we want to hear from the audience, from the people who are here to tell us there is a formula that we use and none of my staff know exactly how that formula works. I don't even know exactly how the formula works. It's something that when your information is inputted in the computer system, it, it runs an algorithm and it says yes or no. 
It gets it right the majority of the times. Sometimes it gets it wrong. All right? And that's when, you remember I spoke about taking the selection from being um, subjective. And in the past, it used to be who you know can get you on a program. I see you're nodding. So you know those days. You remember those days. But now, we need to hear from you. What are some of the things we should be looking at um, to determine who to include in the program and to help us to better identify who is in need, who is vulnerable in the community, and who is truly in need, not the greedy. So we're opening the floor for questions. Uh, we have two microphones in the center aisle, so if you have a question, feel free, just walk right up to the microphone and uh, once, once I ac acknowledge you, you say your name and the organization uh, that you represent or the community in which you live and you go ahead. I mean, it doesn't have to be um, a question, it could be a recommendation as the minister and the PS uh, said before. If you have any feedback, recommendations, suggestions, go ahead and share them. We have a gentleman there with a, a question, suggestion. Go ahead, sir. Good afternoon. Alfred Thomas, Principal Brownstone. Hi. I have two concerns. Um, first is, let me start by commending the ministry for increasing the path grant to high schools and increase from $150 to $280, which is very commendable, however, still insufficient. We all know there's no way $280 can, can provide a cooked meal, and especially with the thrust of the Ministry of Education, encouraging us to have nutritious meals based on the different programs that they're having, it is impossible for $250 to do that. So where it's causing a strain on our school canteen because we have to subsidize it, further subsidize it. So while we appreciate the increase, the $280 is still woefully inadequate. The second point, the second point is with the path list that is submitted to the schools. We have one of the largest population of students on path in this region. So we have, sometimes it fluctuates between 500 to over 650. Every two months we get a listing, a 20 odd page listing, that is not in alphabetical order, that sometimes the grade is missing, so we have a teacher having to scroll through 20 odd pages back and forth to find a student's name in order to input the information. Now, transformation point number four speaks about improved management of information system for increased deficiency. I'm hoping that a part of that is either one, giving guidance counselors access to an online database where we can just go on, input the information. So the same thing that we have to write on a sheet of paper, we can get access, login access to go in Input, because all we're inputting is the number of times the child is present for the month and whether the child is still a member of the school. So whether or not, whether we can have access to that or whether it is that a list that we submit can be accepted. Because when we look at this 20 odd page document, usually we have about a third of the students that are not at our school. We have school students on the list, the recent one that we got, that graduated four years ago. And though we would have updated the listing, the students still come on it. So it gets frustrating when month after month you clean a document, but then the same thing is returned to us. So we're asking for that to be improved because it's very frustrating and my counselors are coming to me because the reps from the center and part office are stressing them because the listing is late. So it's having a ripple effect and we do not want any of our students to be disenfranchised because we are submitting the list late. So if, based on efficiency, we can have a better way of submitting the information, that would be great. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for that, Minister. Um, so, let me thank you for those suggestions. Extremely, I, I'm trying to change the expression on my face because you, you have my brain going in overdrive as to how we can improve the efficiencies. Some years ago, we did try something and we found out that the majority of schools at the time did not have internet and didn't have access. Things have changed and especially with the pandemic now, more schools have internet. So I think we can now revisit ELSA, yes. that initiative that was done many, many years ago from about 2012, 13, yeah, 14, somewhere 2013. there about. And um, in terms of the online access for guidance counselors to be able to input the, the information. So thank you very much for that suggestion. Let me apologize as well for you getting the list not in an order that you should. And that is something we're going to have to to look back at because you should be getting the, the list in by grade in an alphabetical order. So if that isn't happening, we need to work with our MIS and IT persons to address that. You want to add something, Ms. Elsa? Yeah, just uh, on the school feeding, um, just to note though that the budgeting and the uh, determination of the level of benefits is done through the Ministry of Education and uh, we can transmit your issue uh, in terms of the benefit le level but um, based on information about the school feeding that I do know it's a composite or uh, uh, composite view that you should have of it although the level seems to be small it's multiplied by the number of students and used only for the purchase of food. So it doesn't go into paying the cooks and for general administration of the school feeding program. So although you may be looking at it from just a single digit, look at it from a holistic uh, perspective in terms of the number of students in your school and what you can get from what you call compound interest and purchase in bulk to address some of those issues of insufficiency of funds. Just to add quickly that I, I did have a conversation with the Minister of Education around some issues relating to students that are on path and on the school feeding program. Um, and I want our principal to be very, very assured that I've, I've heard the concern. Um, I will speak to Minister Fable Williams, and we'll see how best we can come up with something that is improved and more efficient. Thank you for that, Minister. I, I also am aware that there is a, a rather comprehensive transformation effort that's happening within the Ministry of Education, and, and school feeding is one of those key points that they're also looking at. So um, the truth is there is transformation happening right across government now in different pockets and um, it, it's really good to get the kind of feedback that the principal shared and there is a light at the end of the tunnel work is uh, going on now I saw somebody raise their hand if you could go back to the microphone please so we can hear you sir thank you so kindly because I, I don't want it to seem as if it's a blame game but the same question was asked at a Ministry of Education forum. I asked it and I was told Ministry of Labor and Social Security and Ministry of Finance to, to then hear now that we're going back to the ministry. I'm kind of wondering what is happening because something is happening somewhere. Because so, I would have asked the same question at a school feeding forum and I was told that the determination is between whether social, labor and social security or Ministry of Finance, not education. So. I'm kind of confused because it is, it is strenuous and, I, and I, I heard the response regarding the ministry does pay for the cooks in schools. So it's not a case that we're using the revenue from PATH.
to do that. The, because we can't, because we are going to get in problems. So that's not the issue. The, 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 to, everything has increased. Every single thing. So as I said, we are happy for the slight increase. But if there is any way that additional, something additionally can go on that, that would be grateful. Because it is putting a strain on our canteen. Go ahead, Mr. So again, Principal, listen, we started off by saying, don't hold back. And the reality is, I'm, I'm glad you got up and perhaps made your second comment. I wouldn't want anybody to leave thinking that we're shifting blame to the Ministry of Education. That's not the intention. The intention is for us to have one government. So whether it is the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Finance, what I'm saying to you is, as the minister here right now, my commitment is to collaborate with my colleagues to identify a solution. That's it. So we'll sit down um, and we will discuss exactly what the issues are that you have raised and whether it is Minister Williams or Minister Charles, we're going to come up with um, a solution or at least an evaluation to explain to you why the situation is as it is. Mr. Charles, this is question is for you. There is a suggestion. Would, could you get um, a list of names from the Register General? That's when you have a personal part and they, and they are part from this ruling. You know that that person did. You don't wait till you got the part program them to the same dead and then they don't have any guarantee. Because my mother last year, February, she didn't get any part. She's 88. And I go to the, the office and I said to the Mr. I think Mr. Robinson, my mother didn't get any part in February. Your mother? I say yes. He said, Your mother dead. He said, Chu. He said, What you say? Just so I said, What you say? Your mother dead. I said, How? She turned the computer and showed me and said, Mother dead. I said, No, she's not dead yet. Nobody call on dead panel. <laughs> I said to him, say, who, do who tell you that? Who said that? You don't know about it on the computer there. I said, no, man, she's not dead yet, man. She has more, she has more time, yeah. enough more time, too. And though she may unable, but she has more time. So I said to me, say, all right, I'm going to come up there. That is in what town at the health center next week. And I will, oh, my God, the man coming in at him, calling me out. <laughs> and she not get on the phone I went back again, and somebody told me that they are coming there to find out if she did. And I know then I come. So I'm saying, what way could I get to get her and back panel? Because they're not, they're not, they're not saying nothing to me as an answer. Right? <laughs> not then I say. Gentlemen, can you allow her to finish, please? Thank you so much. And I am saying, I am saying, they should more, because if I say she not dead, and you come in, I'm what on? Are you coming to the clinic? Are you must have that and pay for this event. I'm going to call up on this lady and say if she dead, if she are not dead. I'll know. Me go back again, nobody. And I have a 13 year old grandson. Franny was a baby in register. And even the school, and I know nobody pay her no mind. And I go back several times. Several times. And, and I, you, you are in the office, you don't know what happened. People, when I look at, look at the part program sometimes, people who, not so I want you, who was getting it, have somebody taking it from them, Ghana, America, and them people tell still they get it for them. I don't think that's reasonable. That's right. That will go to somebody they so need it. So today I want to know how I can get on my mother back on the part because she, she needs it. She wants it. Sorry, can um can you come back to me? 
Go ahead, go ahead, Miss Elsa. Go ahead. Um, sorry, you you mentioned your mother's age. Could you remind us of her age? She said she was eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Um, she would actually qualify for the social pension program and should really have been transitioned from PATH to social pension. So um, we're going to make a commitment, Minister, because we have our team on the outside. Um, and we have some social workers here, right, from the office. And the parish manager is here. We're going to ask you to take, take her to the booth and have that matter addressed now, please. Thank you. No, that's a different issue. Um, we're not sure what the circumstance in terms of that particular reason, but we do get the point that you had made that we need to have more connections or collaborations with the RGD, the Registrar General's Department, to ascertain when persons die. And our improvements in our IT systems can assist us with that minister in the reform process. So, as you step out, I know you're heading, you're heading now directly to the, the booth. Um, to the booth so that you can discuss the matter with our officers from the parish here in St. Anne and have the verification done um, in short orders. But I want to say thank you to you for raising the issue. Because you raised a number of issues. Yes. Number one is that we have to look on the system that we're using whether it is the, the, the system itself in terms of technology or the process that we're using to verify. Something needs to be, to be tweaked there. Um, we also have to discuss the matter with our staff to see what they're saying happened in this case so that we can get both sides of the story and come up with the best solution going forward. So what I can assure you is firstly, somebody will treat with your issue today no longer than today. And secondly, um, we will discuss with you and with the staff um, of the parish office here exactly how we can help not only your mom, but you said there's a 13 year old, a 13 year old that you have been trying to get on the path and you've already registered the name. Yes? Yes. So we'll discuss those matters with you as well and see how we can, can give you some help. All right, thank you. So you can go, go to the booth for me, please. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Let's take the young lady in the brown shirt, please. Good morning. Say your name and the community that you're from. Good morning. I'm morning. Keisha Tucker. I'm living in Wilberforce. I've been trying to get on the path for more than five years now. Every time I go, they said I'm put on draft. I don't know what that means. And nobody's telling, explaining to me what it means. I tried to get my mother before she died on it. And it has not worked. My father is 80 this year. I am trying to get him on it as well. And it's no success. My son is 18. I'm trying from primary to get him on it. And nothing. My daughter is 16 this year. She's leaving school this year. And she wants to go to college. I'm not working. And I'm trying my best for her to go. I, I am confused because they are saying it's not a friend thing. But it is still is the friend thing. Because guess what? I know people that are on it that just need it. They are working at hotels and they taught the story how they go to an old lady home. An old lady home to verify that they're, that's where they are living. And they are getting it. My father is, he has diabetes. He needs medication. I have to pay for those medication. Sometimes I hardly can feed him. And there's no... They, they can't do nothing to help me. You know, they are coming and up till now I can't see anybody reach. The first thing they ask me when me reach is, 
Um, do I have a stove? Do I have a washing machine? I have them, but I'm not, I, don't, I can't buy them. I cannot buy them because I'm not working. I, I got it, but it's not for, for uh, my money. Pay for, it's not my money. Pay for it. I beg me. I beg people to help me. Beg. And yet still we have a government program to help people. What's the sense? What's the sense? Madam, I didn't catch your name. What's your name? Keisha Tucker. Um, you know, what you said a while ago echoes the sentiment across all of our stakeholder engagements that there are issues, one, with how people are getting evaluated to be on path, and two, whether the right people are still on path. And so you are the very good example of why we are here today. We are here to hear your story and then to take information from you, not just of the challenges, but of how you think we can improve the process. So I would love to speak to you after. To, to not just discuss the challenges you're having, which we'll ask somebody to speak to you, but to hear from you what you think would help as somebody who has made that attempt to make it better, right? So think about those solutions for me as well. And we'll, we'll have somebody um, at our booth uh, discuss your personal matter with you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, um, I don't know this. You, we do. <laughs> there is somebody else that was in line before you. Just, just hold on a little bit. She's been standing there for a little while. Go ahead with your question. All right. My, my name is Eloise Panton, and I'm principal for Abuthnot Gallimore High School. I have two concerns, and one is read the selection process as. Uh, Ms. Tucker would have spoken to, because we do have students that, from my guidance counselors, they see the need. We have them dubbed as our welfare students, and um, they have not been benefiting from PATH, so that's something that we want to hear. If there is anything that from the guidance counselors they can do in terms of their own home visits and investigation, that would help those students to get on the program. Secondly, uh, Mr. Minister, you would have uh, alluded to the fact earlier that we are facing severe parenting issues and I do know that students that are on path can benefit for up to eight subjects being paid for them for exit exams. What I want to get some understanding of is there's any measure of accountability because we do have students that they get the benefit and don't show up for these exams. So it means that those funds are going to waste when there are other students who have needs who could benefit. So if there will be any measure of accountability for these students, because as you indicated, the intention is not to have them permanently on the program, but to transition as we would have seen from previous persons who would have benefited from such program. Well, thank you, Principal, firstly. Um, and it's good that we have so many principals representing schools here today. Uh, the issue that you raised in terms of the guidance counselors is something which I believe maybe we need to give some more um, or concentrate on more. I think the guidance counselors are an excellent reference for us. And, and I know that we are now in touch with some of the guidance counselors already, but perhaps there needs to be a more formalized um, system and relationship created uh, because they are around the students and they would have had the opportunity to interact and to make some evaluations themselves. And being one government, um, you know, it's, it just makes sense that they collaborate with the social workers and our officers to identify the right students that need the support. So thank you for that suggestion. It will be um, integrated into um, our discussions. Secondly, uh, you raise the issue. Oh, well, let, let me ask the PS in terms of the accountability. I'll ask Pierce to respond to that. Um, thank you, Minister. I'm going to ask you a question. 
I hear you when you say accountability, right? I understand what you mean. Um, and so some years ago, the government took a decision because there were lots of students on path who were not able to sit their exit exams, the CSEC exams, because the parents did not have the monies to pay for all the subjects. We know the Ministry of Education would pay for, I think, math and English, a science subject, a language. So at most, students were getting maybe four subjects paid for by the government. And then a decision was taken, once you're on path, we should pay for all the subjects. You're in the system and you want us to have accountability, right? What would you suggest to us that we do to get that accountability? Well, it might not work. Give me a suggestion. It, I mean, it, 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 even if it's just off the yeah, top of your head, yes. what you're thinking in terms of a suggestion. Well, for one, I, and it might not work, but uh, I'm thinking that if you're issuing funds for somebody to benefit and they do not accept that benefit by not reporting for exam, um, is there something that will be there that I don't know if, if it is that they can, they're seeking future assistance and because of that particular situation, they would not be able to get it. I don't know. Um, because I really didn't process all of that. I know that as a school, um, when exams are scheduled, up to the, the time when the exam is to start, we make checks with the invigilator or the supervisors. We do telephone calls. Um, we would even have guidance counselors going to pick up the students sometimes based on where they live if they say they are having a challenge. But in terms of accountability, for funds that have been invested in you. Um, you're not producing, uh, you know, you get the subjects paid for, and sometimes they take vacation after the subjects have been paid for. Um, SBA is not submitted. If those are not submitted, it means they already would have failed the exams. So some thought, and I really, you know, need to process it a little more um, in order to think through and make recommendations. I trust that I'll have some form of contact. I can have further discussions, and we can maybe make some suggestions to you. Thank you. Thank you. And I can appreciate how you feel as a principal. If I go to the and buy food, I don't want the children to waste it. They must eat it, right? Because yes. you don't want it to, to yeah. stay and spoil. Indeed. All right? And it's the same thing. You monies are paid for these students mm. and when others could be benefit, benefiting right, from it. Right. So we, we will think about it together, right? And with other schools and hear the suggestions. At the same time, we have to balance it because we do not want the good to suffer because of a few bad. But the few bad, we need to find a way, as you say, to make them more accountable for their actions. Yes. All right, Minister, you want to add something? Uh, principal, just one quick um, question. Those students that were um, given the benefit and the support in, per in paying for the exam, the exam fee, who did not turn up, did you get an opportunity to speak to them or the parents and ask why? Yes, conversations were held. And one, I remember the mother said the child didn't have the money to come out. All right, so that was transportation issue. Um, another one, the mother just said that the child had a belly ache. And I said, but you could have gotten something to give to the child, you know, to ease the pain because nurses are no longer allowed to administer medication unless it's the children who take it. But, you know, simple things that as a school, because I think my school, we go above and beyond to help our students, above and beyond to help them. But the lack of communication would have affected the one that didn't have um, fear to come out. Because we say, borrow them, if it's $100, borrow that $100, get the child to us, we will ensure that the child gets back home. 
But the lack of communication is what would have affected that. I want to I wanna thank you for saying that about communication. That's, the, that's where I'm going. That's the point. Okay. In my own interactions with beneficiaries who do not want to speak in public for whatever reason, I'm telling you, sometimes we will say and point and say, you're, 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 it's paid for you, you should come. But they really and truly, some of them cannot find not even the cent to go. Others, you know, it's an excuse. But what I would want to find out is how we can really identify what the situation is with the different students. So, don't leave. Again, as with Ms. Tucker, I'd love to speak to you afterwards and see if we could perhaps use your school as a case study, okay. right, to determine how we can get 100% of those students who we are supporting with the exam fee to take the exam. Thank you so much for that, Minister. There, there is a, a lady in the front here who sat down. I'm going to ask her to come forward with her question now. And then we'll come to the, the young lady at the back in the orange. Go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Valerie McKenzie from the parish of St. John's, and I'm living in Salem. Now, my age is 72, about 1951. So you realize that I'm on borrowed time and soon gone home. Eventually, I've been seeking help from the, from the um, part for so long. I walk now until if you notice, my, I'm limping. I, I can't, I'm not getting any help, none at all. I work on the um, road when the, the people was working on the road. I am supposed to get pension until today, my walk, and then give my envelope. Until today, me can't get no help. Life is so rough and life is so tough. I'm not an educated person. Work very hard in the street to feed myself and my family. Now I'm coming down in here and things is very rough for me. So you understand what I'm talking about? It's not pretty. Sometimes I'm hungry and I shoot me at all. I don't have no money. No, no, I want you to shoot me at all. I have to speak to you. Nothing so help me God. I have speak to it is so rough, Papa, and me, an and, and, and educated person, when I have no money and I have no help more, so I know not nice in my go to. No, not nice. I'm serious, I'm serious. Now I have my great-grandchildren also. These two, one, it's, the mother went up to St. Anne's where till she tired. They were all here today, but eventually they can't go on to, to work because they had to leave before the time to go to work. And for such reason, the little girl walk until in tell a sentence be and sang up and I tell him pure foolishness, turn off the picnic. Sometimes the children they cannot go to school. Right? We understand. We really understand that nobody send them or get the picnic them. And we not expect government to feed them right too. But since we don't make a promise, help no man, help out something. You understand the same? Since we make a promise, help out something. I tell me, me, all of me, so I'm going home, so I may not even get me tan me on. But if the people couldn't get him, on, I really feel good. Help them, man, they need to be helped, man. He rough when he turn bad, Papa. I, I'm going to ask Pastor Black to hire you. Um, thanks for your comment. Um, you know, again, it's important for us to really get a feel of, of how our people are feeling about the program, about our, our office, officers, um, the environment that is being created, um, and how we are serving you. Um, what I would say is that we need to look on your unique circumstance. It's, it's, it's difficult to just hear, hear and assess because the assessment is so comprehensive that you may really believe you should be on path. You may say, I deserve to be on it, but then when the officer makes the assessment, you don't meet the eligibility, which, which I hear you, I hear you. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just explaining to you that the assessment I know for sure has told some persons that they're ineligible 
who really believe that they should be getting past. And that's a part of what we have to look on too. Do we need to change the standard in terms of what we are defining as eligible um, to ensure that all persons who need the support are getting it? Right now, the, the, the category benefit, the, the benefits for various categories are different. So depending on whether you're a student or elderly or in university, you get a different um, benefit. Uh, but it's something that we have to look on. The second thing I want to say to you uh, is you mentioned that you're 72. And we have a social pension program which is applied for persons at 75. But one of the things that we need to look on too is whether 75 is the ideal number or whether it should be 70 or, or whatever it should be. So it's, it's, it's good to hear what you're saying, because maybe somebody like you is really fit, not for PATH, but for that other program, but we need to make some adjustments there as well. Listen, miss, on behalf of everybody who hear your trunk chang voice, at 95, you're going to be around the mic saying that at 100, I'm not going to be here. You're going to be here for a long time. So talk to us. Talk to us after. Let's go to our booth and speak to them about your particular situation. All right, Miss McKenzie, you're going to go and have the conversation with them, right? And, and I am hoping for sure that you will be here at least until 75. Not true. All right, next question to the lady at the back, and then we'll take the gentleman and then come to you in that order. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Sherry Ann Tucker, and... Um, I have a similar experience. Uh, before that though, I just want to say thank you all for coming here because we needed this. Um, <laughs> I went to the park office in St. Anne's Bay with my father, who is also Keisha's father. I went with him and I told him the situation and they said that, all right, they'll be coming there to check on us. And that has been like seven years now. To date, nobody has come. All right, my next thing is um, an experience I had with the path office in Kingston. So I went to St. Anne's Bay. I spoke to a representative there because my son was going to West, um, University of the West Indies. He, I, I, I'm not working, so I asked them. They said I could get a grant for my son of $50,000. So... Um, we sent a letter to the Kingston office and they called my son and said that the check was ready. So my son called them back from Yui and said he'll come and pick it up. He, he was going to tell them that he'd come and pick it up. And the day when he was supposed to go and pick it up, he called, no answer. And he called for two weeks straight after that and no answer. So I don't know where that check is, but thank God my son has graduated from Yui and he's doing okay. So, Mr. Tucker, did he ever, did he go to the office to collect the check or he just called? So did he go back? I think he should have gone back, man. I think he should have gone back. Okay. All right. Um, the, the, I can tell you, if I can jump in quickly. We have had a lot of complaints around the telephone system for our ministry and, of, and also offices. What we did early last year when I became minister is we did a quick assessment of what were the pain points, what were the areas that the people of Jamaica saw as real issues of frustration when they interacted with us. And I must tell you, Mr. Sucker, you identified what ended up as number one, which is we can't get through to the ministry. So our permanent secretary quickly said, listen, you know, we have a system that is X amount of uh, money. The investment has been made. It needs to be implemented. And we, def we defined a project called Innovation Transformation Project. The first thing that project took on 
is the communication system, the telephone system. And we have had significant improvements since then until now. Not perfect, but significant improvements, uh, particularly because the complaints have dropped by almost 80%. So it means that your issue is a real issue. We identify it, we know it's an issue, and we are already working to solve that one. Uh, but again, for anybody listening, in that case, I do think that it would have been prudent for the, for the person, if you can't get through, and it is like a check to collect, go or have somebody physically go and see whether the check is ready to be collected. But thank you. All right, our principal Panton is at the microphone again, but there was a gentleman who was in line before you. If he's okay with you going he's okay. ahead, he's, he's okay. all right then, yes. no problem. All right, so this concerns a past student of mine. Um, he was on path, and he's over 18 though, but he's now blind in, in one eye. So I want to find out if there's any opportunity for him to access um, benefits based on his current situation. Ms. Elsa, P.S.? So, if he was on path, then yes. Um, he can um, be included back on path as someone with a disability. Okay. All right? Even though he has now graduated. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one thing. Secondly, we have a number of other programs within the ministry. There's a Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities, and they provide grants um, to assist persons, as well as the ministry provide grants. So if he's going to school, because not because he's blind, I mean, he went to school, he can continue to school for school. So if he is going to a tertiary institution, we do provide a tertiary bursary of $100,000 per year to assist him to cover his tuition, all he needs to do is to go to the bursary's office at that um, tertiary institution and submit the application. Okay. We have other grants if he wants to do his own small micro business. And I will tell you, the grants may not be big, but they give you a start. And from that start, you know it will grow. So we have a number of other um, initiatives, but if he is not in that path towards ter further tertiary um, studies or micro business, you know, starting his own small business or even um, heart, then he can be included back on path, but he has to be now certified as someone with a disability. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much for that, P.S. Uh, we do have a question from YouTube. Okay. Would you deny someone who doesn't have a birth certificate? That's a question coming from Lucille Sims. Uh, we don't deny persons. We support them. So if you don't have a birth certificate, we do have a uh, provision to support you and to pay for that birth certificate through the public assistance department of the ministry. So ask them to come in and our team is ready and able to support that birth certificate purchase. Can you repeat that, Ms. Elsa? I am saying that we don't deny you if you cannot produce a birth certificate. We're going to support you to get the birth certificate through the public assistance department we can assist you to pay for that birth certificate. Thank you for that response. Um, the gentleman at the microphone, go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to Minister Charles and to all the speakers and all, to everyone in attendance. I would like to ask a question. Many years ago, I tried to get my kids on a part program. They came and they look at my house and they see that I have a flush toilet. And I was wondering, months pass, weeks pass, I can't see them come and look. So I'm, I went back down to St. Anne's Bay. When I went back to St. Anne's Bay, they say I'm not qualified. So I was wondering to myself, it's because I have a flush toilet, why they don't assist me. 
Remember, we live in modern times. Who don't have a flush toilet? Who don't have a flush toilet at their house? So I was wondering if because I have the flush toilet, why I don't get the assistant? I hear that, that question it raised earlier, but I wasn't here. So I would like you to clarify it to me. I want to thank you for your question. Um, perhaps it's the technical persons. And, sorry, that... Mr. Charles. Sorry, Mr. Charles. One more thing. And, and I'm also seeking help for my sister and my mother. My mother is diabetic. My sister is disabled. So I would like to get some help for them. Uh, in relation to those matters, I want you to go to the booth so you can have first-hand interaction with our officers and they can guide you as to either the Disabilities Association uh, or council and what help we can give you through PATH. But for your question that the, you raised earlier, um, I was saying that the technical persons may have uh, the more specific response, but I just want to say this. There is no one factor that is going to allow you to be eligible for PATH or disqualify you from PATH. Matter of fact, if you ask persons in this room who are PATH beneficiaries, if they have flushed toilets, some of them will tell you, yes, we do. All right? Which, which means that having the flush toilet is not the reason why you're not on path if other persons who are here have flushed toilet and are on path. There is a more comprehensive assessment done, which includes what you have, but also goes into other questions. What we want to do when we finish this overhaul, and remember now, because I know, I know people are asking, so what then, what then? Listen to me. The reason we are all here is to listen, to go back to the technical working groups, and to work out what the solution is. So we're not here to tell you all the solutions. No, we're here to listen. But I can assure you of this. Whatever comes out after we're finished these engagements will be simpler. It will clarify for you exactly what is needed and exactly what is going to get you on or keep you off. Because I'm telling you, I said it in my speech which you weren't here. If I had 10 cents for every time we were asked these questions, we'd have a trillion dollars. But this is the question that is asked the most about the PATH program. If I have a flush toilet, if I have a fridge, if I have a stove or a microwave, is that going to disqualify me? So the answer to Jamaica is no. That alone won't. But what is clear is that we have to have a simpler, clearer way of making you understand why you're on PATH or why you are not getting onto PATH. Okay? Elsa, do you wish to add anything? I, I just want to add as well that, um, yes, PATH is here to support the most vulnerable, but we do have other social protection and labor market programs. We offer training, we offer um, support to start small businesses. We try to assist you to get employment. So these other services, persons can qualify for those and be on, still on the road to um, having better outcomes for themselves and their families. Thank you so much for that. There is another lady with a question. Uh, we're going to go with the lady in front first, and then we're going to come back to the lady at the back. Um, go good, ahead. Good day. My name is Denise Lawrence Royce from Lyme Hall in St. Anne. Um, There's a suggestion. You have a lot of program on it, benefit on the part program. For instance, if you want some help uh, build up a house or so forth, that one with the building up of the house, you have to have a quite a pro, um, papers, suppose you live on the capture land, and you don't have the papers, you cannot get no benefit from it. So like if you have a tax, you don't have a tax paper, you don't have a lease paper or a support, so you need, you cannot get the benefit from that. Yes, Miss Denise is, is waiting for her response. All right. We're struggling to see who should take the answer because it's a tough question. <laughs> Listen, Denise, the reality is this. Um, 
we have a lot of Jamaicans that are um, living in spaces that are not regularized. The government has a commitment to regularize land, which is to move from capture land to your security of tenure, where you have a title and you can say, this is my piece of land. That's going to be the big solution. The big solution is to make sure that all of that is done. But until then, not just for PATH, but for the several programs that require you to prove that you own the land, it is difficult because the government cannot involve itself in activities that it is saying are wrong. All right. Hold what? on, I'm not finished. Okay. But we also recognize that many of the persons who are on what we call capture land in Jamaica have been on it for years to the point that that capture land is recognized even by government institutions. All right? So one of the suggestions to treat with it is to find a number of years, maybe five years or whatever the amount of years is, as, as, a, as a number that if you can prove that you've been on it for that time, then we'll be able to give some support. Not finished yet. The other thing is this. There are legal ways for persons who are on land and have been on that land for a long time to have ownership. And I would suggest, as I've suggested to many persons who have spoken to me now as a lawyer, that the government gives support to you that if you've been on the land for over a certain amount of years, you can start a process, whether it is you know, adverse possession or regularization um, or going on the program, uh, is it LAMP that we call it? Different programs that will allow you to be able to have ownership over the space where you have lived for 10, 20, 30 years. Okay? So there are a number of solutions, but we hear you loud and clear. Because the reality is we can't just look at you and say, well, I capture land so you can't get help. That doesn't make sense. And that's not part of what we're trying to do. So just as we help persons who don't have birth certificate, the goal for us is to come up with solutions um, to help persons who are on capture land uh, to be able to be regularized. Okay. So what if the person, you, you meet the person on the land, like your spouse, and uh, the spouse, there is a you're on the land, it's the person who used to pay the lease to die, nobody come and claim the land. Uh, and uh, you want the help to build the house, but you cannot get the help. Uh, what would I do? I think you would benefit from speaking to a lawyer or speaking to the, the National Land Agency unit that deals with moving lands uh, to regularization. I think you would benefit from it. So afterwards, let's talk. Let's see if we can get you in touch with the persons who deal with land, because that will solve a lot of problems for you, not just with PATH, but with benefits that you can get from the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation and from other places. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. My lady at the back there, go ahead with your question, please. Well, thank God for you people. I'm so glad you have come because I have so many things to tell you. Good afternoon to you all. I have a boy here. Who, I have a boy here. When the polo drops come in, he got it. And from that, it was four year old when he got it. It leave me all alone to take care of him. When I get on the part, I only get four thousand dollars. I have to buy a pampas. Anywhere I'm taking him, I have to pay taxi fare. It is so hard. If this lady here help me out now and then by giving him some mattress and something to put in the home. You see, I started a house and I can't even finish it. It's for his father die and leave all alone. So I need some better help from you people. That is why I'm so glad you're here for your mind. Put so much thank you and can i say a big thank you to the lady who is helping you who is she who is that lady this is kim kim what kim bailey Counselor kim. yeah tell her stand up man we'll say thank you to you <laughs> thank you thank you miss you know why i'm saying thank you it's important 
that if we live in communities, we are reaching out to our fellow brothers and sisters and giving help. So, uh, good job. Thank you very much. Uh, we hear you loud and clear. Uh, it, it, it is clear to us that not everybody on path is in the same situation. And what is clear is that we have created different categories based on how general, generalized we can, can be, but there's still a few that need more help. How we treat with it, I can't give you the solution yet, but I can tell you that it is a part of what we are discussing in terms of improving the program. I'm going to give you another example. There are a number of elderly persons that spoke to me in December. And when I met with one in particular, we, we were bringing food for him on the, the Meals and Wheels program. He said to me, Minister, look up. And he showed me some of the, the issues with his house. He can't walk. He's over, he's over 70. He needs help. And he's getting the same support that others are getting. But clearly he's in a much different situation. So it, it, we, we acknowledge that there is need for us to look on how we are distributing the benefit based on the circumstances. And I'm hoping that when we finish the technical working groups, we'll have a, a good recommendation to us um, as to how we can improve in how we deliver the benefit based on what's taking place in your life. So thank you. The gentleman at the back you can go ahead with your question now, please. I might have to bend a little bit. Um, okay. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Good day, Minister, Platform, um, Panel. Thank you. My name is Damian, Damian Heslop. I happen to be a political aspirant in Southeast St. Anne. When I'm on the ground and I'm walking and I'm talking to people, a lot of people, especially young people, and young single mothers especially, they complain that you know they have been left off the PATH program and they're also complaining of victimization. So I came here today to get some answers and a lot of what I wanted to know about i've heard you address directly so i want to thank you for that and it's very very important that you assure the public that there is no political victimization in part because i don't think so and also i would love for you to come to southeast st anne because i was streaming it on my facebook to constituents who are told to watch out for it so I'm making a suggestion that you come to Southeast St. Anne because a lot of, I mean, I get past questions every day and I don't know the answers. That's why I came here today to get myself informed. So I'm thanking you for this forum. I really needed it. And I can go back and discuss this and let people know what's going on and how they can get help. But as soon as you can, please come to Southeast St. Anne because a lot of people there have no clue, they don't know where to go, they claim that they apply and they get dropped off and they feel neglected, you know? And some of them feel that it's politics behind why they're being neglected. So I need you to come to Southeast Centre. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, Mr. Heslop. Do you want to take it, P.S. or Minister? I, I don't know if P.S. wants me to answer because... I can't assure you. Where is Mr. What's his name? Mr. Heslop. Mr. Heslop. I don't know the circumstances that the person who spoke of. I don't know the individual circumstance. It could be politics. Maybe it is not. So I can't assure you without understanding exactly what the situation is. And I'm not going to sit here and act like the reality is that it could never be politics whatever that politics is, whether it is party politics, office politics, community politics, whatever politics. 
What I can assure you is that we are on a mission to make sure that how we serve the people is equitable and that we remove as much of the confusion and the controversy as possible. And so I'd love to hear from that, that person you spoke to directly so that we can assess to see whether it is politics. And if it is, maybe we need to make some adjustments or maybe we need to identify where the politics is coming from and address it. And if it is not, it would give us an opportunity to clarify to the person exactly what happened so they don't leave with the misinterpretation of what we are saying to them. All right? So, so I, I thank you for your... It don't sound like an invitation. You set me up. You tell me that you have all of the people in Saint, South East Saint and watching and then you ask me to come. So it looks like we don't have a choice but to pass by South East Saint Anne at some time. And I would, I'd love to do so um, so we can interact directly with some of the persons there. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We have another gentleman coming up to the microphone, after which I'm afraid we have to close off. We are out of time. A, a, a lady just jumped up and said, no, no, no. Well, okay, we are going to accommodate her as the last um, question. So go ahead, sir. Good afternoon, Minister. Good afternoon, Platform. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Alanja Gordon, and I'm from Brownstone. My situation is that um, I can't get any work. I've been applying. When I get interviews, I don't get a call to come to work. When I do get some work, sometimes it's for just a week or just for a month. And then I'm at home three, four, five, six, seven months. So I am wondering, um, you know, what could happen for a person like me, sir? What's your name? Halanja Gordon. Mr. Gordon, um, do you have any skill? Yes, sir. What skill do you have? I have construction skills, computer skills. Do you have a certificate, a hard certificate? Or any certificate for the construction skills? Yes, sir. I would love for you to speak to us afterwards. Because if you have the skills and you have the certificate to establish that you have gone through the process of training, then you are the kind of individual that should be in our LMIS portal, in our labor market information system portal, so that people who are looking for construction workers can find you quickly. There are several jobs in construction going on now and more to come. One of the difficulties that you hear from the persons who are investing and developing is that they cannot find the right workers. And that's why the certificate is important. Because the certificate will establish that they've gone through the training. So perhaps you need to be a part of that process so that we can help you to be in our job placement program, which will help you to get that construction job or job that can fit your type of skin. Minister, okay. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, and Minister, we also, on the Labor Department side of the ministry, um, Minister spoke about the LMIS, but that unit also does job readiness. So you said you have gone on a couple of interviews and they don't call you back. You know, we, we will work with you. We have um, persons in the labor department in that same unit that minister spoke about, not just about matching you with jobs, because you have been going on interviews, but getting you ready for that interview and that job. We do do that as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any labor officers here. Do we have any labor officers here? I don't think so. But, um, but you can visit the parish office in St. Anne and tell them that you want to be a part of the LMIS program. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. And as L as in love, M. Love. L-M-I-S. Labor I, market. I know about LMIS. Okay, excellent, excellent. I just came to hear further. Okay, all right, so you can follow up on that. 
All right. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck, Mr. Gordon. And final question or comment to the lady who's coming to the microphone. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Kerryon Brown Cole. I am basically here representing the Health Information Department at the Health Centers. We have a few concerns. Whenever you get the path list, the demographic data that is on the list doesn't match up to our data that is in our system. So therefore, basically, if you say Kerryon Brown, and at the health center, we have Kerryon Brown Cole. Basically, we're trying to figure out if that person is the same person. So I'm just gonna ask, whenever the person give you guys the demographic data, just ask them, is this the same data that they give at the health center? If it's not, we're gonna tick that you're not the same person. Another point, whenever the list comes, and it is missing the medical record number. We normally add the number. But from time to time, when we add the number this month, when we get it back six months down the line, the medical record number is missing. That number is vital to the health record department. Because when we have 60,000 persons there, once we get the record number, it's a one-two for us. So I'm just going to ask you, whenever you're putting in your data, please, do not forget the medical record number. It is important to us at the health centers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Kerry Ann. What is clear and arising from your comment, we will be doing this, is that we need to have some meetings with all government departments, units, ministries that we are interacting with to have a sit down to discuss these issues uh, so that the interaction and the intersection of our services is streamlined, okay, and more efficient. So I want to thank you because what you said a while ago will cause us to change how we're moving forward. We're going to integrate into the schedule of meetings that we have that the PATH team We'll meet with the health team, we'll meet with the education team, and we'll look through to see if there's any other agency or department or ministry that we are sharing information with to make sure that our information uh, can be compatible and the systems are compatible. All right? So thank you very much. All right. I, I see, I saw two other persons um, indicating that they have questions. We do, however, have to wrap up. Um, you, you will be given an opportunity to engage with the team to ask your questions directly. But we, it's a suggestion. Want to hear the suggestion. All right, go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natasha Gay Wood Beeson. I'm the guidance counselor at the Survey Primary, and that's in Brownstone, St. Anne. Let me just commend you on the wonderful job that you are doing. As a guidance counselor, believe me, I know because I'm in the office on a daily basis interacting with these students and they appreciate all that they have been given. One thing though is the increase in the subsidy. I know you're doing your best or because you cannot reach everyone, right? It's impossible at times. But just from my point of view, because sometimes we have the children coming to school, not even breakfast. Sometimes when they eat the, the, the path lunch, that's their dinner. I believe as a part of the learning process that you cannot learn when you're hungry. And so I always, when I go to my principal and say that a child is here without breakfast, we make sure that they are fed. Because if they are hungry, they cannot learn. As it relates to the absentees, like for example, for three days that are, as it regards the path, some of the children, is not like they want to be absent, but honestly the parents do not have it to send them to school. As it relates to the other services, I'm glad I am here. 
so I can impart the knowledge that I've learned here today to my parents because even some of the services that I'm hearing about, for example, there are some parents who would like their child or children to be on par, but they themselves don't have a birth certificate. So the fact that you, you, are, you will support them in getting one is a remarkable one for me. Um, as it relates, I'm having Children's Day, so let me just throw it out there. Children's Day, probably in May. I would love to have a representative from the path, from path to come and talk to my parents because it's so sad that a lot of parents who are supposed to be here today are not here because the knowledge can never be too much and they need it. Once again, let me just applaud you on the wonderful job that you are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Guidance Counselor. And final question to the lady at the back. Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. Yeah, at the back, go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon to everyone. And good afternoon to Mr. Chardon, the whole part system. I'm having a ricketts, a mother of nine. And I can truly give thanks to part from for helping me from what they call it. Back in the days, it was like food stamp. Yes, from there until now. And they helped me a lot with my children and now my grandchildren. So I can say thank you. <laughs> That's right. And what a great note to end the conversation. Um, I'm going to ask. Um, and Stanton, that's in Stanton Bay. I always go to Stanton Bay. I always get you. I can give them a chance. Okay, so big up the team at Stanton Bay. <laughs> All right, uh, just to, to turn to um, the, the panel here and ask if you have any final comments to share as we wrap up. Ms. Elsa, you first. Yes, my final comment is don't shy away from our offices. Come in, see what we have to offer. We have several programs. If you don't fit into PATH, you can fit somewhere else. We are here to help and we are here to serve you. So please don't shy away from our services and our offices. Come in and talk to us. P.S. Roberts, Ms. Den. I have heard the number one complaint and that is who qualifies and who doesn't qualify. And that is something we're going to have to take a really deep look at. And I was saying to Elsa here, I would love to get a small group of you in a room. So while you have told me the problem, I want you to tell me what you think the solutions are. So don't be surprised if one or two of you will be called back at some other time to talk to us again. Thank you. Thanks, P.S. Your final thoughts, Minister. Final thought, I'm happy to be a Jamaican. Yes. Proud to be a Jamaican. When I, when I listen to the voices and the stories and the bold experiences and the criticisms, I'm proud to be a Jamaican. Because being a Jamaican means we can disagree, we can agree, we can share our criticisms, all with the goal of getting better. And so, I want to thank you. I want to thank the principals who are here, our guidance counselors who are here, health department officials, uh, the, the citizens who came out, PATH beneficiaries, those who tried to get on PATH and didn't get on, Ms. Tucker and Ms. Tucker and others, and even those who came and asked questions that weren't about PATH directly, but showed us that we have to connect all of the dots in the ministry. Thank you. This is about you. We are here to serve you. And together, we're going to improve this, this very important program for the benefit of those who are coming after you. One love. Thank you so much, Minister. I think... This was really a great conversation and a wonderful way to start your series of town hall meetings. Um, thank you to everybody who showed up today. Uh, I do believe the key takeaway today is that PATH has been changing lives, helping in many ways, but the government wants to build on that and 
the ministry is serious about reforming the program to support the changing needs of Jamaicans. Before we go, uh, I'll say special thanks to the team from the ministry um, leading this path to transformation. Minister Colonel Charles Jr., Permanent Secretary Colette Roberts Risden, uh, the Chief Technical Director Audrey Dear Williams, and Project Director uh, Miss Elsa Elizabeth Marks Willis. <laughs> also, big shout out to the PR and communications team who've been working on the ground and the hardworking production team of the Jamaica Information Service who provided technical support. The ministry will be continuing this series, as you heard, uh, as they seek to get broad consultation across the island. You can follow the ministry on social media and check with the press minister for details so people will know where the ministry will show up for the next town hall. I believe it could well be Clarendon. Yes, indeed, but you will get additional details of date and time. My name is Stacey Ann Smith, and it has been my absolute pleasure to be your moderator for this afternoon. Please walk good and stay safe. Hi, my name is Anissa McFarlane. With the help of the funds that my family and I received from Bath, my siblings and I were able to attend school, obtain good news, and prepare for the start of each year. Now, this is from primary to high school, including sixth form, and that's approximately 13 years in all. Part not only helped there, but after completing my C's and kept examinations, and I did great, of course, I was actually able to obtain a scholarship that definitely assisted me financially in university. My family and I are grateful to Pat for all the help that we received. I endorse the path to transformation. Good morning. My name is Dr. Makeda Bailey and I come from very humble beginnings. My father a farmer and my mother a stay-at-home mom. Love them both dearly. I ended six one knew that I wanted to study medicine, right? However, having come from very humble beginnings, there was that financial burden on my shoulder wondering if I could afford the tuition. But glory be to God that I was granted the PATH scholarship and it aided phenomenally in me completing medical school. I was able to take less student loans and less I have less I have less money to pay student loan and more money in my pocket and I was able to go through medical school without having that financial burden you know um, and I'm just extremely extremely grateful to the PATH committee and for the help that they were able to provide in letting a little country girl's dreams come true so I fully endorse the PATH to transformation. Yeah, good day my name is Ramon Thomas I'm here to tell you guys that I'm a proud beneficiary of the PART program. This program has done a tremendous job, job for me and my family over the years going to the Portmore Arches NTA. And in addition to that, the PART program has also done a tremendous job for me as well by granting me a business grant. This program did such a good thing for me when I was training at the Art College of Construction Service in Portmore where I was doing a welding level 3 and a diploma in drywall construction which they gave me 600 Jamaican dollar per week. It was tremendous for me during those times of difficulty when there is no help my family could not give me any support. The PART program helped me a lot. This benefit that the PART program gave to me has done so much for me including at this moment speaking to you guys. I'm currently in the UK working as a skill worker in welding and pipe fitting. I endorse the PART program in Jamaica doing such a wonderful job and hope they could do this for many more young youths. Good day everybody, greetings to all. My name is Zucker Campbell and I am a final year electrical engineering student at the University of, of Technology. You know, you know, PAF has always been a very integral part of my scholastic journey. You know, my earliest memories of PAF dates back to high school where I benefited from various initiatives associated with PAF. For instance, the lunch program and also being able to do all of the external exams that was required for me to transition from one stage to the next. You know, PAF was also instrumental during my time at university where 
a benefit where the substantial fees associated with you know going to school was greatly alleviated by me being recipients of grants and various scholarships under the Ministry of Labour associated with the PATH program and that's why I am fully endorse you know the path to transformation. Okay, so there might be a space of background noise. My name is Brittany Monroe and I'm here to talk about how PATH has helped me in my in my journey of becoming a pharmacist. And to date, I can't forget um, receiving the acceptance letter. And my aunt would always pay for school fees and all that. She came to me and she said that she's not sure if she'll be able to help in the way that she always has been able to help. So immediately I knew that I had to go and source scholarships and I did a good amount, I think a handful, and I just remember receiving an email from PATH and they were the only one to help fund my um, journey. So I just want to say thanks and I endorse the path to transfer me back. We are a man.